and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hitting the Crew podcast, a look inside the lives of the wonderful crew of Hitting the Field, UCS student-run sports talk show, and despite the coronavirus rearing its ugly head, Hitting the Field does not stop, and that includes Hitting the Crew. Today, we have a super special episode live from our places of living rather than the Nicholson Studio, uh, Nicholson School of Communication and Media. So uh, I'm really excited about today's guest because uh, she is just, she walks into a room and you want to be her friend. So uh, we're going to introduce you all to Miss Emily Hernandez. Emily, how's it going? Despite the whole coronavirus thing, um, it's going, you know, um, but thank you for the very, very kind words. Um, I almost started crying over here, um, but you know, I'm doing good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Good to talk to you. I feel like I haven't talked to you. Or yeah, girl, it's been a minute. Forever. Mm-hmm. But thankfully the coronavirus, although it's very unfortunate, we can still do hitting the crew. Yes, sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. <laughs> And I can do it with a snack. I have a jar of Nutella. It's as big as my face. Oh, wow. I won't eat all of it because you got to <laughs> save some for later. Um, and if we ever go into a full-on lockdown, got to have some food. You so, have to have some leftovers. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> got to <laughs> save some for later. Literally. It's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, but enough about me. Today's episode is all about you, Emily. Okay. I'm going to come and kind of just talk about you. I, I, that's all I want to hear, and I'm and we got a, we got some time. So uh, okay. usually the first question I like to ask everyone when they come on the show is, you know, where are you from, and mm-hmm. how did you grow up? So did you grow up with a lot of siblings? Did you grow up with no siblings? And just what was your life like growing up? Okay, so growing up, I actually was born in Orlando. Um, I lived down the road from UCF for mm-hmm. a while. Then I moved over to the Tampa Bay area. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I you know, lived over here about like 20 minutes away from Tampa um, up until I moved back to UCF. Um, but my family is very much Puerto Rican. And so... Puerto Rico! You know, the extent de la isla. <laughs> and... Um, Growing up, I was always nicknamed La Gringa in my family. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, they still call me that. And I'm like, y'all, I'm over here studying Spanish for you. And I'm the one who's white. But like, um, I grew up with one brother. Mm-hmm. Um, my parents are together, thankfully. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. Grew up watching baseball every single day of my life. So now not having sports, it's really, really weird. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with myself. Um, MLB Network started playing reruns of old games, so I'm watching that. But, like, it's not the same. No, it's not. (laughs) It's not the same. Um, What else do you want? Uh, I mean, but, yeah, so so is your brother older than you or younger than you? Yeah, um, my brother's six years older than me. Okay. Um, he graduated college last year, I want to say. Mazel tov to him. Yeah, he has a degree in kinesiology. Um, so like, there's that. He played baseball since he was like four. Mm-hmm. Literally, I was the annoying little sister at every single practice. <laughs> um, at every single game and like... I was the little girl that was like, oh, my God, they're all so cute. And to this day, I still have that. <laughs> like, when, when you just grow up seeing a certain type of human, mm-hmm. it just it sticks with you, man. And <laughs> to this day, you will catch me at every single UCF baseball game now. Um, I used to go to all the baseball games in high school, uh, even if it wasn't family member playing I'd still go to like support friends and stuff yeah. um so my life is very centered around baseball I actually played softball for a while mm-hmm. 
Um, so I started playing softball when um, I was like six, like t-ball. And then I quit because I saw my brother playing baseball and then like pitching the ball. And I was like, why is my ball on a tee? Like, that's not fair. Yeah. I'm ready to hit dingers and go yard, but mm-hmm. you guys are betting me. And so I quit for a while, and then I picked up volleyball in middle school. Um, I played volleyball for about seven years, eight years. Um, and then I got back into softball, high school. Now I'm not doing anything with my life, so that there's... <laughs> But you're you. This is your first year at UCF, right? It is my first yeah. year. So, I mean, you've you. It's this all. You made it sound like it's all happened in the last, you know, you know, five weeks or something like that. That this <laughs> whole um, you you summarized it really nicely. But I, I want to ask you this. So, obviously, out of all the sports you played growing up, baseball is the one that stands out to you. Yeah. Was there ever a moment? Growing up, we were like, wow, this is for me, 100%. Was there, like, a defining moment, or was it just, like, was there an epiphany that you had growing up where it's like, this is for me, I want to go as far as I can into this field as possible? Mm, I wouldn't say I had an epiphany. It's more like, as I went on with my life, and as I as I saw the people around me develop their skill in the sport, I was kind of like, I fell in love through them. Mm -hmm. So as my brother like kept going into like high school and became like team captain and like got like MVP awards, I was like, dang, like this is really cool. Like I, like I just, I loved being a fan, you know, Mm -hmm. like I fell in love with watching people fall in love with the game. So, um, as I grow up, grew up, I was like, this is something that I never want to let go of. This is something that I want to stay, like, I want it to be, like, a constant in my life, you know? Yeah. And when I found out that I could, you know, eventually somehow make it into something I can get paid for, Mm -hmm. I was like, sign me up right Mm now. And so, like, you know, the saying goes, um, if you do what you love, you never work a day in your life. And that's something that, like, I really am, like, trying to, trying to aim for Mm because yeah no I I totally get that because um you know when I was growing up my brother played baseball um and I didn't um I was I was very much into other things soccer baseball whatever um anything but baseball I never played baseball in my life not even little league t-ball none of that um I was always soccer but I was always around my brother because he'd go on and play in tournaments and he'd go play for his school and all that and one of, and it was, it was cool. It was, it was fun to like go to the ballpark when I was like a little kid, go to the little league ballpark, watch everyone play. Like there's something about baseball that has that atmosphere that you just, that other sports can't match. Yeah. 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 I definitely say that, um, people, people who say that baseball is a boring sport don't understand it. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. so, <laughs> you you appreciate the nuances of the game you appreciate yeah. the fact that it's not timed that it's you know mm-hmm. that there's it's not just hitting a bell it's not just hitting a ball it's not just you know pitching it's not just throwing a ball it's not just hitting a ball it's, it's so much more than that and yeah, you appreciate you, that yeah you appreciate the the calmness the stillness of of the game and like the anticipation that comes with it and that's what makes like the moments like the big the big strikeouts the big hits the big the amazing catches even better than if it was just happen every play yeah so you talked about your brother's journey through baseball but what about your dad did you were you able to use baseball to kind of uh string a relationship with him and to strengthen a relationship with your dad through baseball oh for sure so um, you know, going to all my brother's games, my dad would kind of like take me under his wing and, and explain to me what's like happening. Like, like teaching. Yeah. Yeah. Like as if like he was like coaching me as if I was on the field. So then he'd like, see like, Oh, do you see why they did that? Mm-hmm. They had to force this guy out because he was already there. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. And so like to this day, as we're sitting down watching the world series, watching, you know, um, typical MLB play, it's like 
he stills like, oh, did you catch that? And like, it's just, it's something that we've been able to like bond yeah. over. Like before I came to UCF, we actually went to a Rays game together, like just me and him. Mm-hmm. Um, as kind of like, not a farewell, but like a way to like bring us back to like. Yeah, like a nostalgia kind of thing. Yeah. Um, Cause growing up in Tampa, the stadium's like. 30 minutes away, mm-hmm. that's something that, you know, we used to do as a family, and we still, like, do it, and um, there's a lot of nostalgia um, tied to baseball, um, there's a lot of, like, good times, you know, attached to baseball, mm-hmm. um, and so, yeah, so, my dad, my dad never played, um, I don't think he played baseball, yeah, maybe, like, yeah. recreationally, mm-hmm. but he actually, um, coached basketball Mm -hmm. like minor league basketball league in puerto rico for a hot minute and so like he's also been like now trying to teach me basketball since he like sees that i'm more interested into learning basketball but yeah he's more of he's more of a basketball kind of guy but Mm -hmm. he's still you know baseball is it's in our blood so all right i'm gonna i'm gonna put you on the spot here favorite (laughs) live baseball memory that you've seen with your own two eyes oh god it can be mlb it can be high school it can be your brother it can be anything that you've seen with your own two eyes what is your favorite baseball or softball uh thing that you've seen live okay so i have a funny one and i have like a like a crazy one perfect so my favorite but it's not funny i just think it's funny but when my brother was in high school he was um he was at the plate and he gets hit in the eye, like it's like a eighty-seven mile an hour fastball to the eye, and he drops to the floor. And my mom starts freaking out. And then he just gets up and he looks over at us and he just like gives like like a thumbs up. But then when we after the game, his eye is swollen shut black. Oh no! <laughs> and then this was his senior year of high school, so yeah. he had to go. The rest of his senior year with a giant black eye. Oh my God. It was so bad. Yeah. <laughs> like the, in the moment, it was scary because I was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, he died. Oh my God. <laughs> like, like he, he fell limp to the floor and we we're like, oh yeah. my God, he's dead. No, that's, like, uh, scary. that's no joke. That's no joke. <laughs> but looking back at it, it's just so funny that he got hit in the face. Like, <laughs> he really put his eye on the ball, you know? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. There you go. <laughs> But then, um, I want to say a moment that I was like, this is ridiculous, Mm -hmm. was, um, oh my gosh, there's like so many good ones, but I want to say it was at a Rays game. Okay. And, oh my God, what was it? I keep thinking of when we went to the, um. To the wild card series, yeah. Yeah, I I keep thinking Or no, to the division series, yeah. The division series. Mm -hmm. But. It wasn't then. It was earlier. And, oh, my God. What can I remember? I've been to so many games that they all just mm-hmm. blend into my mind. Yeah. Um, Look, player. Okay, here we go. Okay. I've been Longoria. I wasn't there live. Mm-hmm. I wasn't there live, but, but I was watching it. And when Evan Longoria hit that one home run, it was like game 163. Yeah, yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. I remember that night, too. That was mm-hmm. iconic. Mm-hmm. Seeing just everything line up perfectly how it had to. Oh, my God. It was yeah. crazy. No, I remember that night, too, very well. Um, strange night. Uh, but, yeah, that was – I remember that, and I was like – So, like, when I was a kid, obviously I'm Houston. I'm Astros. I'm that guy. But when I was, like, 10 or 11, I was like – you know what, I've been taught to like Houston because that's where I'm from. So I'm not Mm -hmm. necessarily like, you know, hey, I'm not like, I'm, I didn't want to be like tied down just to Houston. So I was like, let me branch out and let me try to support other teams. And the Rays, ironically, were the one team that I, that I picked as like my second team because Mm -hmm. that was, it was the year that they went to the World Series. And it was the first time they'd ever been good uh yeah. not just not just good but they were in the world series and i was like oh yeah like this is the team to support right now because they're really good and i kind of hopped onto the bandwagon there um 
And ironically, the basketball team I followed was the Magic because they were also good that year as well. So, um, but the Rays, but ever since then, I've had like, not like in a, not like I support the Rays. It's just like a small soft spot, I guess. So yeah. when I saw that, I was like, you go Rays. Yeah. Like it's, it's <laughs> yeah. hard. It's hard to not root for the Rays because they're in a division that, um, features all the villains and they are uh they're not a villain and Mm. they're you know they're not supposed to be good but they are and you kind of just say hey like go raise kind of thing but uh yeah no i definitely remember them brought back some memories for me too yeah i i feel like people kind of take the race for granted you know but i know what you mean when you say that you're like you're kind of like connected to your the like the um the yeah. Astro, because like that's where you're from. But I tried branching out into the National League, mm-hmm. uh, and I've been trying to like kind of hop on the Cubs bandwagon when they okay. won the series. <laughs> have bias, yep. <laughs> yep. Um, if you know me, I have my little bias mm-hmm. lanyard. Ev- like I take that with me everywhere. Yep. Because uh, I actually went to Ringley Field. Really. Um. Yeah. It nice. was winter I want to say it was not this Christmas that just passed but the Christmas before um my family and I we do a lot of road trips yeah and so my uncle flew from Puerto Rico to New York and they ran out of the car and they were going back to Canada or whatever and and so um my uncle calls my mom and he's like hey I bet you won't meet us in Chicago (laughs) and my mom was like what yeah. He's like, you guys yeah. won't come to the Chicago. We <laughs> hopped in our car. We did like a few stops before, but yeah. then we met them in Chicago. And we stayed in Chicago for like four days. Awesome. And so awesome. we went to Ringley Field. We went to the White Sox Stadium. Um, we didn't get to go to the Chicago Bulls Stadium. Yeah. But it's also like, it, this is a thing that. Um, my mom and I also kind of share is that we want to visit every single um, major league park. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're at 12. 12? Can you name them? Um, I've been to Yankee Stadium. I've been to um, National Stadium, Baltimore, um, the old Braves one, Mm -hmm. White Sox, Cubs, Rays, Marlins, Oh my god, there's more. Hold up, I'm trying to like go up. What's your favorite stadium? Fa- oh, that, that I've been to? Yeah. Mm, Ringley Field because it's iconic. Yeah. Um, but aesthetic wise, yeah, the new Marlin Stadium is beautiful. Mm, the, I, that's what I've heard, but it's like the, it's almost never full. So it's like yeah. Well, it's you know. really pretty. Right. I feel like if it's full, it's probably one of the best. Like when it was for the for the All Star game, mm-hmm. it was so sweet. Yeah, no, that the Marlin Stadium's really nice. Um, but you know what? I was kind of disappointed when I went to the Yankee Stadium. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry for anyone listening who's a Yankee fan, but I understand that like the Yankees are iconic, but that that stadium is not it. You it's know? because it's so new. I think. I think the old stadium had that the icon-ness one. to it. Iconic-ness yeah. to it, whatever you want to call it. But, like, that stadium's only 10 years old or so. Yeah. The the old Yankee Stadium was decades old, held so mm-hmm. many World Series there, had a look to it that, you know, caught the eye. It was yeah. that, I th- and I think they tried a little bit to emulate that with the new one, but they, they haven't captured that yet. You know, maybe... Maybe in a hundred years from now, the new Yankee Stadium will be seen in the same light as the old one. But yeah. I just I, I see what you get there. But you know what? The one stadium that you haven't been to that I suggest you try next is Coors Field. It's my favorite stadium that I've been to. I've been to the Rays Stadium, the Astro Stadium, and Wait, the Ooh, Rockies. What stadium. There? The Rockies. The Rockies. Yeah, See, I haven't Denver. not gone. I haven't gone that west yet. Yeah, because not what the way oh, that oh. stadium is constructed, mm-hmm. like the the um the backdrop is 
um, it's the it's the Rocky Mountains. Oh wow! So it's oh, like, wow. That's and, great. and I saw a game like a like a six o'clock game on a Saturday, and the sun was setting, and it was in oh, the summer, okay. so it was beautiful weather in you know in Denver. Summer Denver weather is fantastic. I mm. love it. I I can't wait to go back someday. It's just so, ooh, it's so nice there. It really is. Um, I love it there. But that my suggestion to you: go and try that out. I will for yeah. sure. All right, that's wow, amazing. Um, I'm gonna like I'm gonna play a quick game with you. Okay, all right. I it's, like it's a rapid fire game. So oh God. you got you got to go quick, 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 quick. Because I'm gonna ask you as many questions as I can in sixty seconds. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna ask you your favorite thing, and you got to give me a quick answer. Okay. All right. Let's go in three, two. One favorite baseball player. Uh oh my god, there's so many. Uh Javi Baez. Okay. Favorite vacation spot. Puerto Rico. Okay. <laughs> favorite uh favorite road trip you've ever taken? Um probably the Chicago one last right. year. Yeah. Favorite food. Pasta. Pasta. Favorite color. I say purple, but it's actually maroon and yellow. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway <laughs> this is quick this is quick this is quick um yeah. <laughs> favorite um geez you threw me off uh favorite favorite knights baseball player um either wingo or ruiz jr okay. okay favorite tv show friends favorite music artist one direction rest in peace one direction <laughs> and uh favorite number eight eight why eight um, uh, it's a family number. <laughs> All right, fair enough. And there you go, 60 seconds. Already like that, bingo. I usually use that as a way to kind of transition from one uh, move, one part of the podcast to another. So from now I want to get into, you know, how you got to hitting the field and how you got into journalism itself. So we'll start out and and UCF. So journalism, hitting the field, UCF. We'll start with journalism. Okay. And and what made you want to become a writer and a sports writer at that? Um, so I've always been pretty decent at writing, um, like the standardized testing and writing. Everyone would be like, mm -hmm. but I'd be like, yo, I got this. And I'd always be the first one. There you go. Bang, bang. <laughs> so I guess like I've always knew I always knew I could write in some kind of way. Um, and then when Hurricane Maria hit um, Puerto Rico, the only way that I was able to receive any kind of information was through the news. I had no communication with my family members at all. So I was just stuck over here. Like, are they okay? Are they dead? I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what's happening. And so like, that's when I really grew an appreciation for the work, like for the journalistic work and like the, the media as like a whole. Cause before like I was, I was ignorant, you know, I was like, Oh, they only like spread lies and like they mm -hmm. make you wanna. They're only here to like, you know, for the numbers or whatever to get money. Like the media doesn't really care. But then, when I found myself having to rely on the news outlets, right. I was like, oh my god, these are actually like, these are very like the job they're doing is really important. I want to do that. I want to be able to help people who don't know that like they really like need help and stuff. Um, in a way that is not only beneficial to them, but in a way that they are secure in what they're hearing and reading right. and like, um, and find a sense of peace in what we share. So that's how I kind of got into journalism and then sports journalism, like exactly, you know, just my background mm -hmm. in sports and I just like sports. And then I started doing it this semester and I was like, well, I don't want to do anything but this. That's awesome. Yeah. So you, so you didn't do anything like that in high school or anything like that? No. Oh, in high school, my journalism, like, classes was really only yearbook. And I was like, that's not it. Mm -hmm. So I came into the journalism program with no journalism experience at all. Yeah. That, I mean, and that that's kind of how I entered it, too. I mean, I had writing experience, but I also didn't enter college as a journalism major. So, I mean... It's interesting to see people's um, journeys through it. And if, like, some people are those that are, 
oh, I'm going to be a news anchor, and they know that in the third grade, and they're like, I'm going to work my whole life for this, and then they get there, and it's like, yeah, well, okay, it's not all that you kind of cracked it up to be, but I think what's special about those of us that are newly intrigued by it is that our passion is fresh. It's not (laughs) necessarily uh, things that we've, you know, worked towards for 10 plus years, and we're like, okay, like, all of this and now this is it. We have a genuine appreciation for what we're doing right now and what we are going to be doing in the future. For sure. Yeah. And so sports journalism, let, let's let's get into that knowledge and, and your experience with covering, because I know that you've covered the baseball team, the softball team for NSM Today. Quick plug mm-hmm. there, shout out NSM Today um, this semester. So talk about that experience a little bit. Um, so even though it was brief, yeah, even though it was sadly, Mm -hmm. oh my God, the stupid virus. Um, (laughs) but I came into, it was for my advanced reporting class. Mm -hmm. And so first day of class, professor's like, um, this isn't a class, treat this as an internship. And I'm like, oh God, what did I just sign up for? Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it, I, Take the class with Collins. So if anyone knows who Collins is, you know it's a hard mm-hmm. class. Yeah. And so um, he was talking about, like, all the different beats that we have to have. And then um, I was like, okay, I don't want to write about the College of Business. I don't mm-hmm. want to write about, like, student government. Uh, let me, give me sports. Like, that's something I mm-hmm. know. So, like, I kind of went into it. Like, okay, I kind of have, like, some cushion behind me because – I've already been in this atmosphere, not the the specific like media atmosphere in sports, but like, I know like the lingo and I know like, um, like how to read statistics and stuff. So it'd be like easier for me to do sports than it would for you. have, you have an advantage. Yeah. So that's how I kind of, and then I applied for the B, I got it. And then, um, my editor is actually Chris Wolf. Shout out Chris Wolf. Shout out Chris Wolf. Former guest of the podcast. Yes, sir. And then um, Danny is also how Danny Medina is also like hovering around too with the sports. Uh, Danny Medina. Um, and so um, they kind of you know like have taken me under their wing and shown me like like what like what kind of questions to ask and like when I should approach certain people and like what could potentially be like a good story and stuff. So like the more um, sports specific things, you know, I you know. Kudos to them for being awesome. Um, but, yeah, yeah. that's how I kind of got into that. And then Collins also used to do um, sports journalism. Mm-hmm. He was a like, full-time reporter. Brunson would too, yeah. Yeah, and so he, like, he'll I'll go to his office hours and he'll, like, give me tips and stuff. So, like, mm-hmm. I've just been – I'm not striving for perfection. I'm just striving for progress. Um, yeah. So. I will say, though, you know, I didn't know – little more uh, I didn't know that much about how new you were to this and um Mm -hmm. you know something that you know and I would not have guessed that um you're as new to this as you were given on what you've done so far at least from what I've seen so I want to applaud you for that because I think that you 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 act like you've been in the game for a little while and um you're you're just you know rookie of the year how about that (laughs) Tab rookie of the year. Thank you. But yeah, um, so so how did you find hitting the field? Okay, so I found hitting the field uh, last semester mm-hmm. because of Jarrett. You know, shout uh, out Jarrett, Jarrett former the guest of the podcast. Go check out his episode. Yes, sir. It's a really good one. Um, <laughs> but he was in my principal's journalism class, and mm-hmm. so I think it was the first class. He makes an announcement. And he's like, "Hey." Um, I'm in this club. It's called Hitting the Field. We do a lot of like sports journalism stuff. Um, if you want to do something in sports, just come out. And even if it's like not for you, like you know that it's something that you like put your like you kind of extended your horizons in a bit and like just tried it. You know, he's like, even if you're not sure, just try it. And so I go up to him after class and I'm like, hey, like I'm interested. And so um, I get added to the group chat. And I went to the first meeting, and I was like, this is really cool. And I remember the first day I walked into hitting the field, you were the first one to say hi to me. Oh. And I was like, oh, my God, he's so adorable. Oh, and- wow. Are you sure that was me? 
I promise you, mm. it was you. You were like, hey. And My I was hair like, must have looked good that day. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, hey, what's up? And I was like, oh, hey. And then I was like, I started talking to other people. And they were like, oh, is this your first time? I'm like, yeah, I'm a freshman. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. But, you know, like, I'm here. I'm trying. And so that's how I got in. And then I, I've i come back. Never and- left. You stuck with us. <laughs> and the rest is just <laughs> <laughs> you know, I love that. Um, I love that I can, you know, even though it's like, you know, now with the virus, it almost seems like the semester is over. And mm-hmm. it's like, you know, and it's my and it's my second semester of my senior year. So it almost feels like it's, um, you know, I've done all that I really can do when it comes to uh, pushing the... Pushing the agenda sounds really rough, but just e- exposing people to the the show and what the show can do for people. Right. Um, and I'm not going to say, like, the show is going to be perfect and it's going to bring you everything that you want, but um, it can bring a lot of things if you put the time into it. And I think what it has done for you, what I've seen out of you over the two semesters that I've seen you is I think that you're a lot more comfortable um, around, like, you're you're not as shy as you were um, when yeah. I first saw you. And, you know, maybe that's just because, hey, you know, new club freshman, first week of freshman year, you're, you know, you're a little worried and you're a little nervous and, you know, mm-hmm. you probably don't have that anymore. But you're, it, it's, it's mind-boggling me that you're only 19, right? 19? 18. 18? 19? 18 years old. I turned 19 Jesus, in May. Jesus, girl. Like that. Like like I. You don't carry yourself like that. You're you're <laughs> you're much. You're you're very mature for your age. You, there's you walk around with a confidence that you know. It's very rare to see in people your age. So, um, okay. I love what I've seen from you. Um, and I'm and I'm happy to see it. And I can't wait to see what's in store for you moving forward. But. I'm curious as to, like, where do you think this maturity came from? Was there, like, a moment in your life that um, you were facing adversity and you kind of had to grow up a little bit quicker? Um, I don't think there – actually, you know, like, I'm super blessed to say this, but um, I don't think I've ever gone through, you know, a kind of hardship that has made me um, mature quicker. It's more that I'm just – I'm – on my mom's side of the family I'm the youngest cousin and then after me it's like 10 year olds yeah (laughs) so So you're like the last of your generation kind of thing yeah so there's a big gap so I was just always I hung out with my aunts in the summer who are 60 70 years old Mm -hmm. and I was 10 years old like yeah I like my great aunts so like I I just kind of you have like an old soul kind of part of you Yeah, so I was just exposed to, like, I had to carry myself a different way because I was hanging out with the adults, you know? Mm -hmm. I wasn't hanging out with... Around strong Latina women. Yeah, I was hanging around strong Latina women who Mm -hmm. weren't taking any crap from anyone. So I kind (laughs) of adopted that into my life. Love that. And kind of, like, took little bits and pieces of their all all their personalities and kind of meshed it into one. All right. Um, So... Before we go, I want to ask you one last question. It's a question that I ask everyone that comes on to the show. Mm -hmm. So I want you to pick one person from your family, and I want you to pick one person from your chosen family. So no one – so people that you are friends that you consider your your family, that you choose. So Mm -hmm. choose one person from each that has – Mate, that has really helped you along the path to becoming the person you are today. Oh my god! That you want to shout out, like dedication in your book, in your autobiography. Who's getting that dedication? Um, dang, it's hard. Yeah, yeah. I got the the family member, but I'm trying to think of my chosen family. Like, there's so many. Like, if 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 you got like two, then say then say both of them, or if you got like a group of people that you want to. Shout out. You can do that as well. Okay. So for my immediate family, I talk about my brother all the time. Mm-hmm. He's my yeah. best friend. I love him to death. Um, shout out your brother. So shout out my brother, Elmer. Elmer um, shout out Elmer. 
like the glue. Mm-hmm. Like the glue. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, he's just... You know, we're, we're not perfect. We're all human, so we all make mistakes. But, like, the way that he's, like, carried himself through it all, it's, like, I, I want to be, like, my brother when I'm older. Um, I say it all the time. Um, just, like, the grace that he carries himself with and, like, the confidence. Like, that's something that I want to emulate. Mm-hmm. Um, and, like, he's always, like, he's always, like, told me, like, hey, I'm so proud of you. Like, oh, dang, I wish I was doing that when I was your age. Like, He's like, Emily, you're a beast, dog. He's always yeah. on that. He's like, dude, you're a beast. He's your hype man. Yeah, he really is my hype man. He's really my personal hype your man. Your TikTok dance partner. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did post a TikTok. I saw him. that. It was it was cute. It was good. <laughs> yeah, like he's like really like my partner in crime. I yeah. go to McDonald's and buy cookies. That's one of the things. <laughs> Like, it's, like, yesterday we were playing Call of Duty until, like, 2 a.m., mm-hmm. and then we were making TikToks. It's, you know, it's it's always fun. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I love my brother a lot, so shout-out to him. And then of my chosen family, I want to say my high school group of friends yeah. were amazing. Um, they still are amazing. I still talk to them um, at least once a week. Um, I just saw them last Friday, mm-hmm. and it was, like, nothing changed. Like, yeah. I love my high school friends. I say this all the time, but I love my high school friends to death because, like, they're just an amazing group of, like, women who just light up where, like, in whatever room that they're in. And so, um, like, it doesn't matter, like, what they're going through. They're always going to make sure that you're okay. So then in our friend group, we're all kind of going through our things, but then it's a cycle like, okay, I'm paying attention to Sammy. Sammy's paying attention to Noemi. Noemi's paying attention to Savannah. Mm-hmm. Savannah's paying attention to me. And, and, and then Maddie. So, like, it's like a it's like a big chain reaction. Yeah. That it's just a group of, like, like love and support. That, women you know, supporting women. You know, are. Women supporting women, 2K20. It really is. With the <laughs> women supporting women. I love them all to death. Yeah. And um, I might not be a woman, but I support you, Emily Hernandez. I think uh, I think you're fabulous. I love you Thank so you. much. Um, <laughs> you know, and we haven't known each other for very long, but um, I think there are big things for you in the future. I think the way that you carry yourself is, you know, I don't know your brother either, but like, I, I want to be, I want to be boys with your with your brother <laughs> Elmer now. So it's like, so like, and to me that like that's why I like asking these questions because. You know, the way I see it is hitting the fields of family mm-hmm. and you're in my chosen family and whoever is a family member of Emily's is a family member of mine. Like that, that's how, that's how I operate. Um, and that's how I believe hitting the field was meant to operate. And I'm glad that it was able to bring the two of us together, even if it was just for a year. I know that I, I have this feeling that Emily, you and I, um, we're always going to keep tabs on each other, and I want you to know that um, if you ever need something from me, to please hit me up because um, I really think a lot of you, and I hope that uh, you stay true to yourself and stick through with hitting the field because they could really use talented. Like when you did your host application um, <laughs> for the women show that we were supposed to do. Um, which unfortunately cannot happen because of this stupid virus. Um, I was very impressed by you. Um, it was, it was going to take someone really, like if you didn't get it, it would have taken someone really, really impressive to, to beat you out for it. So I think that you, um, are very talented and I wish you nothing but the best. Um, I know this sounds like, you know, I'm sure we'll see each other soon for sure. I know that after this virus is over, We'll we'll have a cute little Kiki, uh, and it'll be all good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. So thank you guys for tuning in to Emily <laughs> Hernandez's hitting the crew episode. Um, it was the first one that we've done uh, remote, uh, and you know, but hey, it some sometimes you gotta roll with the punches, and that's what we're doing here at hitting the field. Uh, we've done a lot of NFL free agency coverage this week with our main show hosted by Jarrett Kaplman. We also had two podcasts, one covering the NFC team breakdowns and the AFC team breakdowns. We recorded those on Monday. Be sure to check those out on our YouTube channel at Hitting the Field and on Apple Podcasts. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Hitting the Field. Uh, 
we are going to continue churning out coverage um, with Hitting the Crew, with Take Me Out to the Podcast, which should be rolling back up in a couple of weeks, and of course, the main show every Monday. So be sure to stay tuned for that. Uh, from inside my bedroom, uh, it's Jeremy Brenner. She's Emily Hernandez. Thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you on the flip side.